Imagine, it's 2 a.m. in the morning. You hear the alarms go on. Loud and intimidating voices surround you. You have no clue what is going on. You are scared, crumbled and crammed into your 6 by 8 feet prison cell. After a while, a guard enters into your cell, unlocks it and escorts you to the end of the line. That line in turn ends into chambers. Chambers, when you enter, you are stripped off naked. In search of something you have no clue about. You are clueless, standing there ashamed. This is the life of a prisoner. Where you are doubted upon, where you are actually questioned, interrogated at every mishap that ever happens in the prison. Good morning, Toastmaster of the day, fellow Toastmasters and distinguished guests. I am here standing before you to decode the, truen the truth that goes behind the four walls of a prison. Before going into what happens inside the hellhole we call prison, let's understand and have a basic knowledge of what I want to make a point about today. White collar prisons. White collar prisons, as we know of, are corporate jails for the people who have offended or have been subject to non violent crimes. These are the people who have actually done fraudulent activities just on a financial basis and nothing that violent. Hence, these people are being given a little extra freedom, as in, the three things that extra which is being given to do are given to them. First is the minimum security surveillance, which is according to statistics one sixth times less than a normal prison because of the fact that they have committed non-violent crimes. Second, flexible meeting hours, which is approximately three hundred hours in a span of six months, which is almost like you're staying outside. Third, good hygienic conditions, which are way better than the other prisons that we come across. But doesn't it sound like these people are having a gala time inside? Because, let's face it, the one point, these people have come across the most cunning, the most intelligent and the most well-mannered and the top most section of the society. So we all come to come across the fact that these people would devise a plan to get out of these prisons. Now, let's face it, when these people actually devise a plan with the prison officers and the guards, there are other people, there are other inmates who are sacrificed in this entire process. There are reports showing that there are about 21% of the people in these particular <coughs> white collar jails which have been physically assaulted and traumatized throughout their sentences. These people have been mentally tortured and they live in a psychological agony world. But do we really think that the prison is a place where a person is actually put to self-introspect, to think about leading a better life? But is prison really a better place to live in? Is prison somewhere you can actually self-introspect? Do we think that? The answer is absolutely not. Because according to the Statistical Bureau of Justice and Statistics, we come to know that there are about 40% of the prison inmates in these cells alone which have been raped and molested over and over time and again by their own inmates and by the prison officers also. Why don't we question that? First, we are not aware of it. Second, even if we are aware of it, there is so much little that we can do. But yet, when we actually get aware of it, there is a voice that all of us have inside of us. Moving on, there are about 12 people who kill each, uh, to, uh, who kill themselves every single day in these prisons in the state of US, in these white collar prisons. And why have I taken these white collar prisons in specific? Because I wanted to make a very simple point. When people from such high ranking officials, when people who have not committed any violent crimes can do such enormous, such 
degrading things to their own inmates, to the prison guards, to so many people. What will actually happen to the normal prisoners, people who are actually committed and being sentenced for violent crimes such as rape, molestation, abuses? We need to get our heads straight on the fact that no matter what the crime is, if you are inside those four walls, you need a safety net. Because until and unless you have that safety net around you, you are at a much darker space. All of us sitting in this room cannot even think in our wildest imaginations of what these people inside the inmates go through on a daily basis. The mental, psychological trauma and agony, the pangs of loneliness that they go through. Because they have nobody to talk to. Just a few high-ranking officials get out of these prisons, but what about the millions, millions and thousands of the other people who are actually in the engaged there? We need to think about that. Gandhi once said, prison is a second by second death of a soul. It is that